it is time for FYI and a real privilege and a pleasure to have in studio with us Andy Sokolovich of Grow Clinton. Andy, uh, Grow Clinton, of course, a combination of the Chamber and the Clinton Area Development Corporation, which you were a part of, and part of your vision is to get this Grow Clinton. So let's talk a little bit about the mission and the purpose. Uh, you're correct, Gary. Grow Clinton was uh, birthed out of the the combination of the Clinton Regional Development Corporation and the Clinton Area Chamber of Commerce. We just felt like our powers together would be uh, so much better used throughout the community. So in March of this year, we officially became Grow Clinton, a combined 501c6 organization. And our mission uh, in Grow Clinton is to promote business growth, build community, and advocate for the sustainable economic success of the greater Clinton region, because uh, we also do serve Comanche and Fulton from an economic development standpoint. Why the name Grow Clinton? How did that come about? I mean, were there other names that you were thinking about? Yeah, there were a few in the pipeline there, but when we identified what we're trying to do, we look at from an economic development standpoint, you always look regionally. You never look at just a single community because you're so much more powerful if you start to present yourself as a region than just as a single community. So when we thought about it, we are the greater Clinton region. Some people call it the Tri-City region. Some people have uh, additional names. We actually part of the greater Quad Cities um, metropolitan statistical area. Uh, so Grow Clinton just was on the tip of everybody's tongue. So that's what we selected and moved forward. And of course, they selected you to head this up did you feel that your background with the clinton area development corporation kind of lent itself to yeah, doing this absolutely i mean with the development corporation i had the ability to work on attraction projects business retention projects and you know really saw myself moving forward as a perfect fit for the position of president and ceo of grow clinton so i threw my name in the ring and it worked out in my favor well congratulations Thank you. so so now what do you offer your member investors well, a whole bunch of things, Gary, and this is what every business out there, whether you're small or you're large, you have different concerns, issues, impediments, pitfalls in your business plan. So we are necessarily a suite of services, but we're more so a consultant. So when you come into Grow Clinton and you're a member business, we sit down with you and identify any opportunities to increase your success or identify those impediments to growth, whether it be gap financing, you need a location, you're trying to identify a local banker to work with. We try to fill all those voids and answer those questions. And we do it in partnership with some great organizations like the Small Business Development Center and SCORE, which now is referred to as just SCORE, but it used to be the uh, Senior Corps of Retired Executives. And now they want to get away from the retired part, <laughs> so they just focus on SCORE. But we have helped several dozen businesses over the last couple couple of months really see opportunities that I don't think they would have been able to identify without our assistance. And it's such a wide variety of members. I mean, you're talking industry to small business. Yeah. I mean, you look at last week, I was sitting down with a young gentleman who's trying to start a business in Clinton and just him and his wife. Uh, they have a couple of kids and they're just looking to kind of cut their teeth in the entrepreneurial space. And then the next day, I'm cutting a ribbon celebrating $156 million capital investment out at Nestle Purina Pet Care right here in Clinton, Iowa. So, yes, it's a very diverse business group that we have. Again, visiting with Andy Sokolovich at Grow Clinton. Let's move into economic development. Uh, you bring up Nestle Purina. My goodness, what an asset for our community. Absolutely. You know, you have a lot of people that say we need to attract new business, bring in the new business, bring in the next big employer. And why that is something that we look at, the reality is, is 80 percent of our economic growth, the injection of new wealth into our community is going to come from the expansion of existing businesses, whether that's a small mom and pop shop that wants a second location or are looking to add on to their store, or it's a $156 million expansion, brand new training facility for a large employer like Nestle. We also have Archer Daniels Midland, ADM, doing some amazing things in the construction of a new corn wet mill and a lot on the bioprocessing side. So new wealth is constantly being injected into this community. And while you may not see it all the time by the addition of new smokestacks or cranes in the air i guarantee you it's happening because i work on it every single day maybe kind of jumping ahead here a little bit but the clinton community college career advancement center mm -hmm. kind of lends itself to what perina is doing with their expansion and as you talked about business retention keeping people in the community and 
educating them in the community. Yeah, absolutely. Workforce development has been the tip of everybody's tongue, uh, even prior to the pandemic. I mean, having the skilled workforce that you need in order to grow your company is pivotal and critical uh, to the success of your future growth. The in, the creation of the Career Advancement Center in partnership with Eastern Iowa Community College and specifically Clinton Community College is massive. It is going to allow students the opportunity to get a great education, hands-on education, under one roof located right here in Clinton, Iowa, where they can touch on nine career pathways. Some of those pathways include welding, automotive, culinary, nursing, all these high demand career fields that we have out there. And you know, a lot of those career fields don't require a four-year college degree. Mm -hmm. So you can go through these pathways, stay here at home, hang out with mom and dad, right? Mm -hmm. Live in the basement (laughs) and get some quality education and then go out there and test the waters and see what you're truly interested in. I mean, one of the things that I absolutely love about the community college and what they're doing with the Career Advancement Center is so often in the past, we've we've pushed youth to pursue a four-year degree because ultimately that's what you were going to need to be successful. That has completely changed. We flipped that mindset on its head. And now you can go out there and go through some of the trade schools that are available. You can test the waters at the Career Advancement Center. You can see what you truly enjoy because they always say, if you love what you do, You'll never work a day in your life. So try it out while you're young. I mean, here I am, 40 years old, at a point where I'm doing something that I absolutely love. I had the opportunity to come in on the radio and talk about a community that I absolutely adore. I don't feel like I work every single day. I feel like I'm out there promoting success of our region, and I'm probably the biggest cheerleader in Clinton, uh, you know, because that's what I love to do. Well, let's talk a little bit about that before we move on to some of the other talking points. It seems like our biggest cheerleaders so often are people who are from outside the community and then make Clinton their home. Yeah, it's. I always use the analogy. It's like getting a stray pen mark on the bridge of your nose, right? You're walking around. Everybody can see it. You got some pen on your face. (laughs) But your eyes don't function in the way others do, so you can't see it just sitting there. And that's kind of the reality for me is I moved to this community in 2012, and I absolutely fell in love. Prior to that, uh, 12 years, I was in the United States military and traveled all over the place. There's no utopia out there, Gary. There's no place where there are people say, I love my property taxes. They are just perfect. There's nobody that goes out there and says, I love the amount of potholes we have. It's just the right amount, right? No matter where you live there's going to be complaints about the community but you have to be able to see the forest through the trees and I think we're in a position right now where we are prepped for nothing but success moving forward and we have a lot of passionate leaders at the helm that I'm excited to work with you know and on the flip side of that our mayor Scott Madison is a Clinton native and he's all on board for the city yeah great guy absolutely love his his passion his enthusiasm his outlook for development of our community um, he's 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 tested the waters too and have done some things that um, others would deem not incredibly popular popular, but I think he's doing the best that he can do in an elected position, which kudos to everybody out there that throws their name into a hat to to run for city election or state election or even federal election process, because it takes guts to put yourself out there and try to petition yourself for a position in leadership. Andy, let's take a break right now before we really kind of get into some more things. Our 1545 weather brought to you by Citizens First Bank. We'll see a mix of clouds and sun for today. A little warmer, too, as we get up to 60 degrees this afternoon. For tonight, mostly cloudy skies becoming clear late. We'll drop to 30. And even warmer for Friday, mostly sunny. And we'll see highs into the mid 60s. With your Storm Track 8 forecast, I'm meteorologist Andrew Stutsky. Sunshine, we're at 41 degrees. Our update brought to you by Citizens First Bank. Citizens First Bank Digital Banking provides you with ways to protect your personal financial information. Use the card on off feature if your debit card is lost or stolen. Monitor your balances to watch for anything suspicious. Enable text alerts so you're notified of a transaction over your limit. And custom alerts are available too. 
to Banking As It Should Be at Citizens First Bank. Visit our digital branch at gocfb.bank or one of our local branches. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. FYI, and again, we've got Andy Sokolovich of Grow Clinton with us. You know, we talked about Perina retaining business in the air, but, you know, you also want to attract new business, right, Andy? Absolutely, and there is a process to that, Gary. Let me tell you what. Uh, Well, just an example companies send out what they call site selecting consultants. These are people that determine where they're going to plant their flag and bring in a new business. And when these folks come in, they're looking at everything between site readiness, do we have active utilities out to a greenfield site? Greenfield meaning just dirt, right, or farmland. Um, Do we have available buildings that are out there and suitable for bringing in a new business? When these site selectors come though, they also go out into the community, they stop at your local gas stations, they go to local grocery stores, and they will ask people walking the aisles, what do you feel about this community? Tell us your impression of the community. And your response plays such a key role into the attraction of new business, probably even more important than me responding to them regarding utility information. They wanna know what the pulse of the community is. Is it a quality place to live? Rewind the hands of time back in 2016 when I got involved in economic development. And when I would engage new companies, all they really cared about was the access to available utilities, cost of those utilities, cost of available buildings. Now, and I don't know if the pandemic had anything to do with this, but being that workforce is their number one concern, they want to make sure that we're offering a quality of life to those who are ultimately going to work there and move their needle forward. So when they're out there asking questions about schools, or about quality of life, amenities. Be careful how you respond because you never know who you're speaking to and what power they wield over attracting new businesses. So it's an amazing process and I have grown very fond of an asset we have in town called the Lincoln Way Industrial Rail and Air Park, which is a 350-acre certified industrial site out on the west end of town, just west of Lyondell Bissell in the city of Clinton. And I can tell you, working on that site for the past almost seven years, I can tell you where the squirrels have buried the nuts (laughs) in 350 acres. Some of the requests that I get for companies for information are that detailed. And we spend a lot of time wooing and trying to attract these companies to the region. Sometimes it works out in our favor. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a very competitive market. And before it would be like Clinton versus Area X. Now it's a global competition. Um, so we have to make sure that we're we're putting our best foot forward every single time we engage a new company because the attraction game is brutal. With that being said, let's talk a little bit about some of the competitive edges that our area may have. We're certainly, you know, right on the Mississippi River. You mentioned the rail. Uh, you know, I think our municipal airport is a, a, an unknown treasure out there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why we call it the Lincoln Way Industrial Rail and Air Park. Uh, why it is a smaller municipal airport, it does provide fueling services, and we have a lot of our uh, company ownership do fly into that facility, and they appreciate the existence of the municipal airport. But having access to a robust four-lane highway system and Highway 30, why I would love to see Highway 30 <laughs> four-lane completed uh, from the city of DeWitt uh, to uh, out there in Lisbon. It would be amazing, but we have access to I-80. We're very close to additional interstates on the Illinois side. And of course, that body of water called the Mississippi River is a huge asset. No doubt about that. Let's get back to the workforce development and the welding apprenticeship apprenticeship program. You got that as one of your talking points. Yeah, the welding apprenticeship program we established as part of Clinton High School's uh, welding program several years ago. So now students that have a desire to weld as a profession can complete their high school required courses, attend their welding classes, but also leave like halfway through the day and go out and actually work for a regional employer welding. So you are getting essentially paid to learn. We have several success stories. One is a young man 
who is over at JT Cullen in Fulton, Illinois. Loved welding, went through the program. He was our first success story out of it. And now uh, I see him cruising around in a new truck. He's, he's earning a decent living, and he's welding, something he loves to do. The other success story is a young lady who's working for Air Control Link. She's over there kind of welding circles around some of the folks that have been doing it for a long time. Not only that, but she's passionate about the art side of welding. So she's creating these little figures and animals and stuff like that on her downtime that she hopefully uh, gets to a point where she can sell those things and earn herself a little bit extra cash as a side hustle. So that's always great to hear success stories. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of these things where we keep building on that workforce pipeline. And, and you know, some people like to see it go a little bit faster. But you know what? Myself nor anybody else in this community can snap our fingers and just have an injection of another 20,000 people move into our community. But I will say that through ha- recent housing developments, uh, the Wilson Building, which is an amazing project in the 200 block of Fifth Avenue South, it'll turn into the Wilson Lofts and there'll be over 30 apartments inside that building that has a waiting list, I think, of 80 people deep that are excited about living there and, and thriving in downtown Clinton. We're seeing new people come to our community because we're offering them the resources and the amenities they're asking for. You talk about snapping your fingers. Does it get frustrating sometime? I, I would imagine you want things to happen now, but they're not going to happen now. Oh, economic growth moves like molasses in wintertime. You know, sometimes we have immediate success and it's very exciting, but other times we have to sit back and be patient. I mean, we can look at the growth of Dubuque. That didn't happen overnight. I mean, Dubuque was at a position where it was kind of like the funny thing to say, last person out of Dubuque turned the lights off. And now look what the community has been able to do. But it takes time. It takes strong leadership. It takes a vision. It takes a strategic plan. But we will will get there and I've just in the short amount of time that I've been in this community I've seen a tremendous amount of growth and positivity injected into the entire region and I'm excited to continue to work with those positive individuals because negativity gets you nowhere it really does you're a positive person no doubt about that let's talk about partnerships with state agencies you've got that as a talking point yeah, so we do partner with um, both Illinois and Iowa side with their workforce development agencies. So specifically those that are out there seeking employment opportunities, you can call Grow Clinton. We can put you in contact with those agencies and they help you find jobs. And they also help existing businesses that are out there looking for fresh talent, a new skill set that want to come into their company. We can leverage those state agencies to help with that as well. Um, we also work with the Iowa Economic Development Authority, which is the statewide economic development agency that helps us in attracting new companies and retaining our existing companies. Not only do they help us, but they actually financially support the expansion of a lot of these companies, ex- uh, including Nestle Purina Pet Care, uh, through investment dollars from the state. So it's huge to have those partnerships and maintain them moving forward. I'm again, visit with Andy Sokolovich of Grow Clint. I think our listeners would be interested, Andy, in like, what a typical day is for mm-hmm. someone like you. I would be interested in knowing what a typical day <laughs> is because I don't have a typical day. I mean, this morning I'm on the radio. After I get off of this, I'm going to contact uh, some potential prospective buyers of an existing building here in the community that want to just learn more about what we have to offer. Uh, following that, I'm engaging another conference call about another existing building that we have in the community that somebody's interested in. And then there's always reaching out to those site selectors, sending them marketing collateral and letting them know what we have available in the form of assets and then this afternoon i'm meeting with a small business owner that just wants some guidance as to what they should do next in order to become successful so every single day i make sure that i try to tap into not only working with the large companies but also working with our small businesses because the amount of economic wealth that's injected in this community through small business development is massive. So it's important that we don't overlook those small Main Street businesses because they are vital to our growth. Do you have somebody help you with your calendar or how does I that do. work? Yeah, no, kudos to my entire staff. Uh, we have Karen out there, Leslie, Stacy, Ashley, who Ashley's a new addition. I believe she's been on the show in the past. She's doing all of our marketing collateral and our event planning. So yeah, we have a team. There's a total of six of us and we've been working together for quite a while now. So there's a lot of synergies in the office and a lot of injection of positivity and just inspiration. 
You mentioned 2016, so you've been doing this for about six years now. So it's still relatively new somewhat. How do you make connections? How do you network with the people Mm -hmm. that you need to network with, Andy? I travel. So I go to a lot of, we have an organization called the Professional Developers of Iowa that meets twice a year across the state. I hang out with those folks. And honestly, the best thing that I can do to support this community is copy the success of others. I mean, nobody's out there trying to reinvent the wheel. So every time I go to one of these conferences and I hear about a success story from another community, whether it be like the El Cater Main Street Revolving Loan Program or it's something else to do with workforce development, I bring those back to the Clinton region and I speak with our leadership at City Hall and ask them, you know, how can we create something similar? And then obviously there's the International Economic Development Council I'm involved in, mm-hmm. as well as several other organizations. So, and then there's the beauty of the World Wide Web. Just do a Google search, find out how things are working elsewhere across the country and see if we can bring those successes to our own community. I mean, that's what we did with the student loan payback program we have through Clinton County. Um, and that's been very successful. You mentioned state agencies earlier. Now, we're right on the border, Iowa and Illinois. Does that play into anything at all? It does. It does. And, you know, it is, it's, uh, you know, some states offer very grand incentives to business relocation packages. Some states have small incentives here and there. Um, But ultimately, when I look at our partnership with the state of Illinois specifically, we spend more of our time working with the smaller companies over there on the main street. But we also work with Timken Drives. We work with JT Cullen. Uh, We work with AgriKing. And, you know, we, we do our best to make sure that we are constantly up to date on what each state is offering in the form of either incentives or assistance to regional companies. But we have to stay on our toes because it is two different states with two different mindsets towards economic development and growing the economy. So we we have to make sure we're always doing our due diligence. Again, busy with Andy Sokolovich wrapping things up. we got a couple of minutes left in the program. Thank you so much for coming Oh, thank you for having me. I love this. Is there anything that I have not brought up, we have not touched base, that you would like to bring up now? I will just say some events coming up on November 27th, uh, the holiday weekend. We are doing the ever so favorite uh, father daughter dance, mm-hmm. where if uh, you're a dad and you got a special little lady in your life, you can bring her to the father daughter dance. We'll have it over at the Vista. It's going to be a great opportunity. So check out growclinton.com for more information on that. Today, in fact, we are presenting the Grow Clinton Innovation Award to AdCraft and Temple Sports uh, for their investment in new technologies that they've been doing to obviously support the sporting needs of our community and uniforms, but also their web stores have been insanely successful. So we're excited to get out there and and share the wealth and shine a light on successful companies throughout the community. Our goal is always, I mean, here I actually wrote down our core values and I'll read those off. We're going to promote brand credibility through excellence. If you do amazing things, we want to know about it. We take action to meet business needs. I addressed that earlier and how we help businesses grow. Here's our third core value at Grow Clinton. We present positivity always. And I'm, and I'm constantly kind of hammering this in my staff is that we have to be positive because negativity gets you nothing. And we're going to continue to collaborate for the betterment of the entire region. And that just speaks to our partnerships with state agencies and other organizations throughout the community. Um, so we're, you know, we're not perfect, but I think we're doing some amazing things, and I'm very excited to have the opportunity to lead this organization. I well, appreciate it. Now, if people would like to find out more, how can they do that, Andy? GrowClinton.com. Again, GrowClinton.com. Our office is located at 721 South 2nd Street, right underneath the South Bridge. It's the old Armstrong brick building. Um, or they can uh, hit us up uh, via the telephone at 242-5702, 242-5702, and you'll hear an amazing voice. So that is Karen Freeze will answer, and she'll be happy to contact the person that you're seeking. If it's me, just say, hey, I want to talk to Andy, and we'll make it happen. Thanks so much for coming in, and enjoy your typical day today. Yes, I will. Thank you, Gary.
Coming up on the next John Tesh Radio Show, we've got all your favorite